The Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, has rejected the increase in the price of petrol, threatening that it would no longer guarantee industrial peace. It added that an emergency meeting of its organs will be summoned to deliberate on the actions to take. The president of the NLC, Comrade Ayuba Waba, while reacting to the fuel price increase, told journalists in Abuja that the labor movement was shocked at the development. To talk more on this, we have joining us live in the studio, legal practitioner and public affairs analyst, Libora Soshoma. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. We also have joining us virtually, Bala Zaka. He is a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much for joining us as, as well. Thank you. I mean, quick succession. We had, we're still contending with electricity um, um, tariff increase, and we have this. What's your understanding of the rationale behind this decision at a time like this? There's no rationale for it. Um, uh, in one breath, the government, um, this is the only government that has shared um, palliatives for more than 11 million people in 48 hours, even though we are not seeing those uh, people. Um, this is a government that is feeding um, school children that are supposedly at home. Um, this is a government that um, wants to ease, you know, uh, the burden of um, the hardship created by the coronavirus by even proposing, if you remember last week, the vice president did mention that the federal government was going to give bailouts to private schools to pay teacher salaries. And yet, in another breath, you just increase um, the price of the mono, econo mono product that drives your economy. And then you hike the price of um, electricity tariff. Um, yet, you have not even metered your country 40%. Uh, there can be no rationale for that decision, no matter how much you want the forces of uh, demand and supply to drive um, um, your, your, your market. It, it's, uh, it, the essence of government is the security and welfare of the people. And, and so at some point, government should be thinking of cushioning the hardship of uh, the current reality on the people and not just leave them to the vagaries of uh, market forces. Mr. Zaka, let's bring you in. Um, Concerns, uh, I mean, everywhere. Palliatives, like Mr. Liboros, um clearly stated, didn't go round as expected. And now we have this. The Nigerian Labour Congress has come out clearly to say that uh, they cannot guarantee uh, industrial peace anymore. And this is like a slap. I'm just paraphrasing what they say. Um, it's like a slap in the face of Nigerians. What are you expecting from Nigerians um, as a result of this um, latest adjustment? Well, I, I will expect a total disappointment from Nigerians, uh, regardless of whatever rationale the government is, is, is trying to put forward. And, and, and we can ask ourselves simple questions. As loyal citizens of this country, how can a responsible and a loyal citizen of a country be able to plan in a country where he or she cannot predict inflation figures? How can citizens be able to plan in a country where they cannot be able to predict the value of currencies, especially their local currency? How can citizens be able to plan in a country where they cannot predict the state of security or insecurity in their country? How can citizens be able to plan when they cannot be able to predict the direction of government and governance. I mean, let's look at also the, the GDP variables. Every country that is supposed to do well is supposed to have a very good GDP. That is gross de domestic product. How can citizens be comfortable and be proud when all the variables of the GDP of their country is low? Look at the consumption index. The consumption index is very, very low because the disposable income has been eroded by inflation and other variables. Look at the investment index. How many people are coming to invest in Nigeria today, whether from outside or from within? People cannot invest because of business climate hostilities. Look at the aspect of government expenditure or capital expenditure. It's virtually nothing to write about home about. Then look at the export-import differential. It's, it's almost negative. 
So if the variables of the GDP are so low and the economy is not predictable, then you're talking about a country that is suffering or came from the suffering and is still suffering from a global pandemic that even rubbish organized nations. Then it is in that kind of country that you will say you will deregulate and be coming up with unpredictable prices of basic commodities. The commodities that have no substitute, like the petrol, does it make sense? Does, it doesn't even make sense. So but when on, you look on, at on it the from flip every side of aspect, this, on the I flip mean, side, every reason for people to be disappointed. Um, uh, let me come back to you, um, Mr. Shema. On the flip side of this argument, uh, the, this price change, um, a lot of persons will say it shouldn't come as a surprise because in the past instance, the PPPRA did announce that the NMPC will no longer subsidize um, uh, fuel prices. And they also said something about modulating uh, the petroleum prices on a monthly basis. This was announced sometime uh, in April. This outcry, isn't it an overkill? Because we saw this coming. There was a progression. It didn't just smack bang, maybe from uh, 50 naira to 151. There was a progression. From Progression from where? Um, that uh, because um, the PPRA says, OK, Every week there will be a, um, a review, a price review, and so for that, Nigerians should suffer because um, uh, the PPRA has failed to plan um, for um, situations like this. And then you're talking about um, um, price review, that the forces of um, demand and supply will determine price, and yet you still have a uniform price across the country. You're still paying bridging costs. Why is PMS, the cost of PMS, the same? in Lagos with the cost of PMS in Kano because government is paying a bridging cost and yet government is not, has deregulated. Government is no longer regulating. Government is no longer pay, subsidizing, you know, the product. Look, let's tell ourselves the truth. I have said it consistently. If the essence of government is welfare and security of the people and you have two mono product, two, two, co two commodities that drives your economy, one, it's a uh, um, uh, 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 petroleum product. The other one is electricity. One, the price of one definitely affects the price of the other. If you cannot provide electricity for your people, they will have to rely on petroleum product to power their generators. And, and so now, the first thing you do, you hike the price of electricity tariff that you are not providing effectively, and then you hike the price of um, the alternative that they have to provide for themselves, and you say they are not, they are not um, uh, dependent on your power. What you have done is you have ab abdicated your responsibility to protect your people. What you're telling them is to your tent, to Israel, take laws into your hands, do as you wish, because we have failed. Because we simply told you last time that we are going to be reviewing prices by a monthly or monthly basis. That's not how government is run. In, uh, and then they are quick to point to you uh, America, that in America, the forces of uh, demand and supply determines price. But you find out that there are other variables in those places. You can decide not to drive. You can take the tube. You can decide not to drive because government had provided alternative. Here, for the past five years, government has been promising us. Ibe Kachiku did come out to say that if our refineries are not working before May 29, that he will resign. And we laughed. We said, look, by May 29, your government would have been up. Now, nobody's even talking about the refineries. Nobody's talking about the modular refineries. And they are so quick to tell you, let the, uh, the, 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 the forces of uh, the market forces determine well, price. Uh, uh, and this, this, so, this what, is now your, pro, what is now the essence of you being in government? Um, I'll come back to you, Mr. Zaka, but I want to stay with you. You, you said something about the government uh, knowing their responsibility and knowing what they want to do. But if, we, if the comments coming from the APC is any indication, the government feels that the APC issued a statement describing the recent hike in the price of, of electricity and petrol as in the best interest of Nigeria. That so is the most if something, so if something is, if, if your perception of the situation is this way, and the government in power, who has the responsibility to regulate and manage the welfare of the people, thinks in its the wisdom well. that the decision is in the best interest of the people. Where does that leave us in this argument do you know why, now? Do you know why to them? I just imagine Eli Mohammed 
in opposition at this time, in 2012. The PDP government said no, it was in the best interest of the people. And then those APC people who are telling us today that this step is in the best interest of the people. I imagine what they had said. If you go into your books now, you'll be ashamed of that statement. And then, secondly, you look at governments. You, I, I, like I said, the essence of government, we should take it from that philosophical you know, so what point can of we, view. Can we, if, if the essence if the of government, government is uh, to ensure that people, if the essence of government is to ensure that the welfare of the people is paramount. And then, as we speak now, there are, people are losing jobs. There are no investments in, in, in the country presently. The infrastructures are not there. Even you, you produce oil, but you don't refine, and government does not care. Recently, government said Kaduna refinery so, no, is no, running no, at a Mr. loss. Mr. Shema, no, I'm, you, you, I'm, I'm trying I'm, to give you the indices. Uh, because of to, time, I wanted to, you to speak on the if the government feels this way, Okay, let me rephrase it. What can we do as a people that's, I'm coming to there. bring that's them where, to see that's where I'm a different... To. That's where I'm coming to. Government says, with all of this, recently the government says Kaduna Refinery has not been producing for four years, yet they are paying salaries. And, and so, the, in, a, in a situation where we're in crisis, we're almost in a, an economic crisis, and yet the government had not cut its costs, we still see uh, uh, legislators and executives living an ostentatious lifestyle. And the government, the, the lifestyle of the common man, the government has increased. And the government now turn around to tell you, it's the best for you. You will be a fool if you sit down there and fold your hands and refuse to do nothing. All right, um, the Mr. Occupy Zaka. Lagos, Occupy Lagos and Occupy Nigeria would, would have been a child's play compared to what I expect Nigerians to be doing now. Rather than troop out to go to churches on Sundays, they should rather troop out on the streets on Sundays and demand from government that the right thing should be done. Otherwise, right. very soon, this government will increase poor pump price to 350 naira and tell you that it's in the best interest of Nigerians. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Uh, it will happen. Zaka, it will happen. What's your reaction uh, to all of this? Because, uh, I mean, on one hand, we're getting reactions from NGOs and non-governmental uh, bodies. Even some political parties have said that this hike is not in the best interest. But um, uh, the party, the APC, I mean, a lot of persons will say that would be the thinking of the government if they say that the hike in the price of PMS and electricity is an evidence of, uh, let me see how I put it here, uh, it's an evidence uh, that the administration is working in the interest of all Nigerians, even when outrage is being expressed. Okay, I, I just told you now, I analyzed the GDP variables. Let those who are the government planners or the economic planners tell you any of the variables in the GDP that is working. I mean, you're talking about economic restructuring mechanisms. Yeah, your economy, depending on the sector, you either have a deregulated sector or a privatized sector or liberalized sector or a commercialized sector. Look at the downstream sector of the economy. This petrol or PMS we're talking about. How can you deregulate the price of a product that has no substitute. Can you go and pour pet, uh, water into, a, into, into the tank of a car and drive? Can you go and pour sand? You can deregulate water. I have the option of drinking sachet water or bottled water or dig, dig my well and drink the water. I can even go to the river. I can, you can deregulate prices of, 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 of beer, beverages and the rest because there is a place I can go Take beer at 1,000 naira and take beer at 100 naira. You can privatize or deregulate so many things. But you are talking about a country that, is a, that has a very weak currency, a, current, a country that is an importing nation, a currency with a very huge population, a currency that the revenue to GDP is something that is, is shameful. How can you, in situations like this, say that the decision of the government is good to deregulate a sector. Okay, as I speak to you, you are in Lagos. A given example is a place like Osho D Market. People will, are supposed to bring granite oil to Osho D Market. Palm oil, maize, granite, and the rest, cow. All those will come from different parts of Nigeria. Do you know what this increase in PMS has now done? to the factor that will be put into transportation. It's, it's, it's so strange. 
Everybody is seeing it. So another thing I can tell you, the countries that are refining, and Nigeria is shamelessly going to those countries and importing. Meanwhile, we have the crude oil here. If refining is not a lucrative business, will those countries be refining? Or oh, now that Nigeria said we don't want to be refining, is Nigeria saying that Nigeria is more intelligent or oh, our leaders are more intelligent? Another thing I want to tell you also, these are situations where you can see clearly that a country can shamelessly not want to take advantage, original advantage, and become a, 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 a regional hub. If we were to be refining internally, do you know what will happen to our economy if we were to be the ones supplying these displays to all these West African countries? These West African countries that are our neighbors will leave the shores of West Africa and go to Asia or Europe or the Americas to import distillates. When I talk about distillates, I mean petrol, diesel, aviation fuel. Just imagine what will have happened if we were to be the ones refining here. Then we have a rail line throughout these countries and we are those supplying them. Doesn't simple common sense tell anybody that we will be the ones that will have the economic and regional power and by extension become the continental or regional hub of Africa? These are common sense. All right, uh, Mr. I mean, Mr. It, Mr. Zaka, uh, in the white, interest of time, in the interest of time, I, I want, we, we live in rather unpredictable times, uh, pandemic and, you know, the global effects that is uh, the offshoot of that. And, I mean, Nigeria is also affected. Um, a lot of persons, have, uh, um, including yourself, have expressed concern um, over it's, this it's move by the government. Do you think the outrage expressed by Nigerians will be enough to effect a change? And how do you think... Shouldn't that reaction come? We should go about getting the government to really understand how hard this is hitting the ordinary man. Even without the outrage, there should be a review of thinking. It's something that has to do with common sense. And if after the outrage, there is no review of thinking, then we are, I would just say it's very, very unfortunate that we're dealing with a government that has no conscience. And let me tell you the meaning of deregulation. With this deregulation, knowing that we have a very weak currency, we are an importing nation, and we have a very weak, I mean, high population, and we are. Sir, we, in, in we, the interest, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry to economy. keep interrupting you. What will you? happen is this, Mr. Zaka. Moment from now, Mr. Zaka, the price of petrol will get to 200 naira per liter, 250, 500. It may even it, get I mean, to Mr. 1, Zaka, if you can hear me, if you can hear me. We already, I mean, you, you and um, Barista Oshama have been able to expose on some of the issues that will come up uh, from this hike. And I'm asking you now, what is the, in a roundabout way, what is the way out of this to impress on the government these observations that you've put forward? If you can respond in 30 seconds, uh, I'll be very appreciative so we can get to uh, uh, Mr. Oshoma. In the days when we were operating the subsidy, subsidy is an economic cushioning concept. It was a good concept, but it was also the failure of the government that allowed economic vampires, economic maruders, and economic traitors to make subsidy a failure. The way forward is this. We have to think inward and internally domesticate. We have the raw material called crude oil here. We can get it from the wellhead here in Naira, move it to the respective refineries after fixing them through pipelines in Naira, refine our petrol in Naira, distribute it to Nigeria and regional neighbors in Naira, generate right. our Naira, and first of all, free ourselves from exchange rate differentials. All right, Mr. So Zaka, all we, um, um, we need to give uh, uh, Mr. Oshama some talk time like so we can costs, wrap up. Insurance costs and the rest. Mr. Zaka, uh, thank you very much uh, for your contribution. Let's just take um, um, Mr. Oshama's uh, final thoughts on this. Um, very simple. First and foremost, the citizens have to be alive to their responsibility. A government um, will not do your bidding because simply because you voted them in. You have to consistently keep them on their toes. That's when they remember. It's a give and take thing. And that's where they remember that, oh, yes, we made promises to certain persons. And so we have to be alive to the uh, promises because they are reminding us 
uh, because when you have an irresponsible government, they forget the promises that they made. And unfortunately, we keep making excuses for them rather than calling them out to their responsibility. Simple. You don't say because uh, some people messed up a concept and so just throw it away. Don't do anything about it. Instead, make life more difficult for the people. If you do that, you're taking the people that voted you into office for granted. Then secondly, we have been talking about re refineries working, modular refineries. Why are we not channeling our efforts in that direction, knowing fully well that since you do not have the control of the currency for the, 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 the currency used to purchase this product at the international market, the, the, your price is going to be dependent on the fluctuation of that currency if something is not done. Oh, and, and so that's why government need to sit back and say, you know what, we can't allow our people to suffer this, the consequences of our lack of understanding of the uh, 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 international economy. Let us first and foremost cushion the effect while All we right. look for these alternatives. As Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shoma, for joining us on the program. And of course, Mr. Zaka, thank you very much for your time and your input as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. I will be giving my take after this short break. Please don't go away. Now, living during a pandemic is hard enough with its attendant challenges. But to have people's circumstances further compounded by leaders who should look out for them is even more unfortunate. What is even most unfortunate is that the people who should have the power have been reduced to onlookers in matters that concern them, unable or unwilling to do what is needed to remind elected leaders that decisions must be made with the best interest of the people always as a top priority, come what may. As it stands, the people live at the mercy of political intrigues. It is our daily meal with which we dull the edge of persistent hunger and anger. We go, it seems, wherever our noses are pointed, without any struggle to redirect our gaze or nose at where it really matters. I'm not sure if you understand where I'm going with this. I certainly hope that you do. But to be clear, my take tonight is a message to every Nigerian. Until we are pained enough to do something, we will continue to take what is given and smile while at it. Thank you very much for sharing your time with us tonight. I will see you later. Please be well.